Okay, so we need to draw three resonance structures for CnO minus isocyanate minus, or, well, in this order, it's not isocyanate, but uh, in either case, we're told that the skeletal structure is CnO, right? And then let's uh, figure out how many electrons we have to work with. Carbon brings four, nitrogen brings five. Oxygen brings six, and our negative charge brings one. That's a total of 16 electrons. Great. Um, yeah, so let's uh, start things up here. Uh, what else do they tell us? Okay, resonance structures. Three bond is draw three resonance structures and then select the best based on formal charge. Okay. All right. Well, let's start with uh, the following. Uh, basically, we know that carbon, uh, out of all of these, is the least likely to want to have negative charge, right? Uh, for that reason, it's Carbon always wants to have four bonds. Uh, we can't give it four bonds without giving it a quadruple bond to nitrogen, which just isn't going to happen uh, without breaking nitrogen's full octet, right? Because it's always going to have this bond to oxygen as well. So the closest we can get to giving carbon uh, four bonds would be to give it three bonds and a lone pair. Okay, and then how many electrons is this? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Uh, what have we got left? We've got three lone pairs left, right? So those would go on oxygen. Okay, so this is one possible structure. Uh, this would put a positive, or, sorry, a negative charge on carbon, a positive charge on nitrogen, and a negative charge on oxygen. At this point, now we can start looking at resonance structures, right? So this is probably going to be the best because any additional resonance structures are going to start messing with uh, the charge on carbon and start giving it multiple charges. That is, we can't really move anything around without also moving around these triple bonds and turning them into lone pairs on carbon if we want to maintain a full octet. So the first maybe obvious thing we could do would be to turn one of these lone pairs into a bond and turn one of these bonds into a lone pair to give us this resonance structure. Now, all of a sudden, carbon's got uh, two lone pairs and a double negative charge. Nitrogen is still positively charged, and oxygen is neutral. All right, so overall, it's still minus, or it's still a negative charge. And the final uh, form would be to do this once more. Uh, one of these lone pairs becomes now part of a triple bond, and this double bond, one of them will go on to carbon. So we basically swapped the roles of oxygen and carbon. Now carbon has three lone pairs. And in fact, carbon has a triple negative charge, not too likely. Uh, nitrogen is positively charged and oxygen is also positively charged here, which also is not very likely. Okay, so now which of these is the best in terms of resonance structure? That's going to be the first one, right? Uh, why the first one? Well, we know carbon of any of these atoms is the least likely to have a negative charge because it's the least electronegative, right? Remember, the periodic table goes carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and things only get more electronegative as you go to the right. So the most likely one of these is the one where carbon only has a single negative charge. Uh, finally, when it comes to formal charges, anytime you see a double negative over a version where everything just has a single charge, that's always preferable. Uh, having two charges, uh, unit charges on a single atom is highly, highly unlikely, right? So this form is far more stable. Okay, now let's select the statement from the multiple choices that is true about the important or best resonance structure. Let's see, the leftmost bond between carbon and nitrogen is a triple bond. That's true. The number of non-bonding pairs of electrons on the rightmost oxygen atom is two. That's false. There should be three lone pairs. Okay, the rightmost bond between nitrogen and oxygen is a double bond. No, it's a single bond. 
the rightmost bond between nitrogen and oxygen is a triple bond. No, it's a single bond. The number of non-bonding pairs of electrons on the leftmost carbon atom is three. That's false. That is true for the, there's only one lone pair, and that statement is true for the very bad resonance structure.